Hello, the peace of Christ, everyone watching this program, welcome back. Today we are going to look at the teaching of uh, Ahmed Didat and we are going to get a very exciting formula which will help us to find uh, the name Allah in the Bible. Where are they? These are eight deities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight deities. Remember, eight deities. What are they? They help you to find Allah in the Christian Bible. In the Christian Bible. Okay. Now let's go and then let's learn about them. Uh. Mr. Dillard, I'd like to find out from you, uh, your books say that uh, the, the word Allah uh, was used by the followers of, by? Uh, by the followers of, the word Allah. By? By who? By the followers of Jesus. Uh, oh, right, right. <laughs> by, by, by. All the Semitic religions. Yes. I by Semitic, I mean the religion of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Yeah. The word for God Almighty is Allah. That's so, in my book. Yeah, so my question is, uh, how come only the followers of Ishmael have managed to retain the name Allah? Where did the name Allah get lost by the Jews? Yes. And I show you. You see, even in the Bible as the Christians have it. You have the Bible here. And in the Bible, if you have, you get one by Reverend Schofield. Translation of the King James Version by Reverend Schofield. And is a translation from the King James Version 1611 by Reverend Schofield. He translated into Arabic from Arabic, from where? From the King James Bible. In his first chapter, first verse of the Bible called Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. You see there, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the first sentence of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Now, we have a commentary. It has a commentary. Reverend Schofield, backed by eight DDs, not DDs, DDs, Doctors of Divinities. Eight DDs. Reverend Schofield, backed by eight DDs. Not didats, DDs, Doctors of Divinities. Eight DDs. And Reverend Schofield, backed by eight DDs. Not didats, DDs, Doctors of Divinities. Eight DDs. And he gives an explanation that this word God in the Hebrew language is Elohim, which is a uni plural name. Is plural name. Allah, so Allah is plural. <laughs> and also in Hebrew, El and Elah. And he spells the word Elah alternatively as A L A H. As long as I was reading Elah, Elah, E L A H, E L A H, I couldn't see the connection. That is Allah. But this Reverend Schofield, I have the Bible. If you like to come along and see, I have a photo start of that Bible. I give it to you. It says A-L-E-L-A-H, alternately spelled as A-L-A-H. I said, right. If it's A-L-A-H, it's Allah. You say Allah. I said, look, say Allah. My language, my language, I want you to pronounce as I want you to pronounce. You see the English language? As the Englishman wanted me to pronounce, I pronounce it. Because when I went to school, at the primary stages of my schooling, I came from India. I didn't know A, B, C, D. I didn't know what a white man looked like. Wallahi. I didn't know anything. I was like a raw barbarian coming from India into South Africa. Started with A, B, C, D, K, K, G, Alep, B, T, S, A. Shh. At the age of nine, I started four languages. One time. A, B, C, D, Alep, B, T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South Africa. So at school now, they teach me beauty bats, beauty cat, and beauty mat, and beauty rat, and beauty... <laughs> okay. Oh, let's, let's go out of this crazy stuff. So, Allah is in the Bible. Okay, let me show you in the book of Genesis. First, let me show you the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet. 
This is the Hebrew alphabet. There are two uh, for A, like to use A, ah, you use them, both of them. This is Aleph and this is Ayn. You have to. Why should you use Ela when you can say Allah? Why? Why? That's such a, a deception. A deception. And in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, Bereshit bara Elohim. Elohim plural. Elohim plural. Elohim. It's not singular. Genesis 1 1. Genesis 1 2. Elohim. Beruah uh, Elohim. 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 Genesis 1 uh, uh, 3. By Yomer Elohim. More than 30 times. Elohim is plural. 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 Now, let's go to the point. What's uh, he say? Allah. Allah in the Bible. Allah in the Bible means curse. It's a curse. The word is this one. Aleph, Lam, Hey. Lam, Hey. Psalms H423. Allah. 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 Allah means what? Curse of or curse. Curse from God. Curse. How many times? Uh, numbers 527. Curse. Uh, Deuteronomy of. Uh, most of the time it is curse. Deuteronomy 29. 19. Curse. 20 curse. Uh, curses. According to all the curses of God. The covenant. All the curses of the covenant. So this is what? Allah. Allah. Aleph Lamed. Hey. Aleph Lamed. Strong's H423. Allah. 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 You can you have hair. Allah means what? Curse. Hi everyone, the peace of Christ Jesus. We are having another lies and deception from Ahmed D. Dot. Allah is found nowhere in the Bible. Arab Christians changed the word God, Elohim, into Allah the reason was they were being harassed by Muslims. In order to survive among the most hostile Muslims, Arab Christians started to the name Allah. For example, in Malaysia and Indonesia, Muslim scholars forbade Christians from using the name Allah in their Bible and Christian texts. The courts and judges sided with Christians and approved the use of Allah by Christians. If Allah was the same for Christians and Muslims, how come the Muslims oppose the use of the name Allah by Christians? Let us come to the point, Ahmed D. quoted Genesis 1-1. But in Genesis 1-1 the word God is plural which is Elohim. We read in the beginning, God Elohim created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis, chapter 1 Elohim is used more than 30 times. This is a flat lie from Ahmed D. and Muslims. The Oxford Encyclopedia of the Modern Islamic World, ed. John L. Esposito, 1995, p. 76 77. The cult of a deity termed simply the god, Al Ayla, was known throughout southern Syria and northern Arabia in the days before Islam. Muhammad's father was named Abd Allah, servant of Allah and was obviously of central importance in Mecca, where the building called the Kaaba was indisputably his house. Indeed, the Muslim Shada attests to precisely that point, the Quraysh, the paramount tribe of Mecca, were being called on by Muhammad to repudiate the very existence of all the other gods saves this one. It seems equally certain that Allah was not merely a god in Mecca but was widely regarded as the high god, the chief and head of the Meccan pantheon. Whether this was the result, as has been argued, of a natural progression toward henotheism or of the growing influence of Jews and Christians in the Arabian Peninsula. Thus Allah was neither an unknown nor an unimportant deity to the Quraysh when Muhammad began preaching his worship at Mecca. The Oxford Encyclopedia of the Modern Islamic World, ed. John L. Esposito, 1995, p. 
P76-77 the Bedouins of the desert, who comprise the majority of North Arabia's population, were basically animistic in their religion. Springs and wells, stones and trees were the dwelling places of spirits, and wild animals and fearsome places of the wilderness were inhabited by jinn or demons. Higher gods also were worshipped, and among these the most important, for our account, were Allah, Allat, Aluza and Manat. While Allah is best known as the principal god of Mecca, he was also worshipped in other places throughout Arabia as is shown by the occurrence of the name in Sabian, many and in particularly Libyanite inscriptions. The Quran, 29, 61, refers to the belief of the pagans in Allah as the creator of the heavens and the earth, and Muhammad's own father bore the name of Abd Allah or Abdullah, meaning the slave or worshipper of this god. In Mecca, Allah was worshipped in the Kaaba and possibly represented by the famous black stone in that place. Allah, according to recent study of the complicated inspirational evidence, is believed to have been introduced into Arabia from Syria, and to have been the moon goddess of North Arabia. If this is the correct interpretation of her character, she corresponded to the moon deity of South Arabia, Al-Maka, Vad, Amr Sin as he was called, the difference being only the oppositeness of gender. Mount Sinai, the name being an Arabic feminine form of Sin, would then have been one of the centers of the worship of this northern moon goddess. Similarly, al Uzza is supposed to have come from Sinai and to have been the goddess of the planet Venus. As the moon and the evening star are associated in the heavens, so too were Alat and al Uzza together in religious belief, and so too are the crescent and star conjoined on the flags of Arab countries today. As for Manat, her original home seems to have been in Hejaz. The etymology of the name is judged to be connected with the root mana, meaning to determine or to meet out, and it is thus suggested that she was a goddess of fortune or fate. The same root is at the basis of the name of the god many or Deshi mentioned in Isaiah 65 11. Prior to the rise of Islam, these three goddesses were associated with Allah as his daughters and all were worshipped at Mecca and other places in the vicinity. Articles about all three of them were written by the scholar Ibn al Khalbi, d. a. d. circa 820, in his Kitab al Asnim or Book of Idols, extensive portions of which are preserved in the Geographical Dictionary of Yaqut, d. A. D. 1229. According to Ibn al Kabi, the sanctuary of Allah was in Taif where the goddess was represented by a rectangular block of stone, over which a building was erected. Al Uzzah stood, says the same authority, in the valley of Nakla to the right of the road from Mecca to Iraq. This manner of speech leads us to suppose that Al Uzzah also was worshipped in the form of a stone pillar, and Ibn al Kabi speaks expressly of the house which was built over her. Manat was the oldest of the three deities, according to the same authority, and was a large stone in the valley of Cade between Mecca and Medina. The Aus and Khatsraj tribes of Medina were the most prominent worshippers of Manat, while the Quraysh of Mecca paid much reverence to Allah and al Uzza, most of all to the latter. The Quraysh were the tribe to which Muhammad belonged, and Ibn al Kalbi states that before the Prophet began to preach his own message he himself once offered a white sheep to al Uzza. Such was the paganism in which Muhammad was reared and which he later came to believe it was his mission to dispel. The milieu of the Prophet was not one, however, of polytheistic paganism untouched by any other influences. As in South Arabia, so too in North the monotheistic faiths of Judaism and Christianity had long since become known. When the first Jewish communities were established in North Arabia, we do not know but a plausible hypothesis supposes that the enhanced commercial opportunities consequent upon the residence at Tama, Taima, of the Babylonian king Nabonidus, Nabunaid, attracted colonists as early as the latter half of the 6th century B. C. From there they followed on down the main caravan route to establish other colonies in Kaabar, Medina and Mecca. The influence of Christianity was brought to bear upon Arabia both from Syria in the northwest and from Mesopotamia in the northeast. In the 6th century A. D., the Arabic kingdoms of the Ghassanids in Syria and the Likmans in Mesopotamia were allied respectively with the Byzantine and the Persian empires and were strong centers respectively of Monophysite and of Nestorian Christianity. From these regions and in this time if not also earlier, Christian ideas spread on into the farther reaches of Arabia. 
A careful study of the relevant data particularly in the Quran shows that Muhammad had a very considerable store of knowledge of Judaism and Christianity and that it was of the sort which he would have been most likely to obtain through oral channels and personal observation over a long period of time. He was especially impressed, it seems, with the fact that both the Jews and the Christians were people of a book, and it was his desire likewise to provide his own people with a book which would be to them what the Torah was to the Jews and the Bible to the Christians. Source, 1, Al-Bukhari, D, A, D, 870, 2, Muslim, D, A, D, 875, 3, Abu Dawud, D, A, D, 888, 4, Al-Tiramidhi, D, A, D, 892, 5, Al-Nasai, D, A, D, 915. The Archaeology of World Religions, Jack Finnegan, 1952, P482-485, 492.